So GTA Online has been notorious for having brand new glitches come out every time Rockstar drops new DLC for the game, but today we're going to be taking a look at what Rockstar recently did about a money glitch and one of the most damaging glitches to GTA Online. What's up guys, it's Nick Plays Games and welcome back to the channel. So like I was saying, if you've been playing GTA Online for a while, you probably know about the glitches in the game, whether it's something like getting invisible arms from an outfit, god mode from a wall breach, or a money glitch. And you may have found yourself trying some of these glitches out in GTA Online, or at least watching tutorial videos on how to do them yourself. Well, it looks like Rockstar Games has finally had enough of this, and it looks like on May 7th, Rockstar has begun to roll out not just money wipes, but full-on character resets to anyone that was abusing the casino chip money glitch. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, the casino chip glitch was basically a glitch that was publicized recently where you bet the max chips at a table in the casino and just close the game if you lose a round, stopping you from losing your chips and when you lose a round and basically allowing you to only win, allowing players to make around 100k a round. As this is one of the more easier glitches to do, it looks like it was heavily abused, probably pumping billions of glitched money into the game. Now, I can see why Rockstar is angry at this, as if it isn't obvious by now, GTA Online's main source of revenue comes from players buying shark cards. As players, we don't have to pay a cent to play GTA Online or get access to any of the DLCs aside from paying for Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus if you're on console, but like I said, Rockstar Games gives us complete access to brand new DLC free of charge as long as you own a copy of GTA 5 and to, to develop these DLCs likely cost Rockstar Games quite a bit as they have to have a team assigned to work on the DLCs, write the mission storylines, do the motion capture for the cutscenes and animations and not to mention actually programming the missions and AI to be functional in GTA Online, all of which is not free to produce. So when players abuse these money glitches, it basically costs Rockstar Games any type of return on the investments they are making into developing these DLCs. Now it's not the first time there have been glitches in GTA Online and generally speaking, Rockstar Games doesn't usually punish players for abusing these glitches as long as they don't go overboard with how much money they make. For example, a very common glitch that's been around for years is car duping, which started with the LG RHA Custom or the Too Fast Too Furious car, rest in peace to Paul Walker, and moved on to the Weenie Itsy from the Arena War DLC. Now, Duping these cars would allow you to sell them back for over a million per dupe with the ISSEs reselling to Los Santos Customs for almost 1.8 million GTA dollars if fully modded. What Rockstar did to combat these car dupes was basically put a limit on the amount you could sell and if players sold over two cars in a 24 hour period they would get hit with the limit of cars being able to be sold or worse have the value of all these cars drop to zero dollars basically making them worthless. But players found lots of workarounds to this including custom license plates to avoid these so called dirty dupes. Now, I'm not going to get into this too much as it's a topic for another video, but what I'm basically trying to say is that Rockstar Games has typically been pretty lax about GTA Online glitches in the past, so to see that they've actually gone as far as resetting entire characters is pretty harsh to see, but then again, you know that terms and conditions thing that nobody reads before they join GTA Online? Yeah, well, there's a part in there about views and glitches, so if you glitch, don't forget you take a very big risk. Now, me personally, I believe the reason why Rockstar has been pretty harsh about this glitch is because with the pandemic going on right now, GTA Online's revenues may be pretty low as to what they were seeing back in 2019 with less people purchasing shark cards this year. Uh, to add fuel to this fire, players abusing money glitches eats through even more potential profits that Rockstar Games could have been making, so it looks like they're pretty serious this time with the money they're losing from these glitches. 
It is kind of sad to see considering GTA Online is nearly 7 years old now and some players have lost years of work from these resets. I've even seen on Twitter some kids going as far as to sending death threats to Rockstar on Twitter which I think is pretty ridiculous considering at the end of the day it's just a game. Losing your Mark II oppressors in GTA Online isn't going to ruin your life. Or at least I hope it doesn't. Now. Looking at the history of GTA Online glitches, GTA Online has had many glitches since its release back in 2013, and it's not surprising to see most players abusing money glitches considering in the GTA Online economy, prices of your average cars or properties in GTA Online are way higher than the amount of money your average player can make. Now, I have a lot of respect for the players of GTA Online that spend countless hours grinding away at their businesses, import-export missions, and selling crates, but with the amount of kids flying around in Mark II oppressors nowadays, unless you can get yourselves into a solo public lobby, taking the risk of selling your cargo is just not worth it. Especially when you spend hours uh, sourcing your vehicles or collecting crates for your warehouse and trying to sell a full warehouse by yourself because you don't want to share profits of your own hard work. This right here is cancer. Now, looking at the prices of your average DLC from Rockstar Games, we can see things really inflated from GTA Online on the last generation consoles. Back when GTA Online was only released on the Xbox 360 and the PS3, the most expensive DLC drop at the time was the Ill-Gotten Gains Part 1 where Rockstar decided to drop a Buckingham Luxor which is not that big of a deal except for the fact that it was gold plated and was available to buy for 10 million GTA dollars. To put that into perspective for you guys, 8 million GTA dollars or the Megalodon Shark card in GTA Online cost 99999 US. Now, since the plane is 10 million, we need another two, which brings the total cost of this plane to $125. That's over double the price of a copy of GTA 5 itself just to fly a golden airplane in the game that can be shot down with one rock, one rocket and can't even defend itself. Now, this was released back in June of 2015, and back in 2015, the best way to make money was with heists, which only came out three months before the ill-gotten gains DLC in March of 2015. Now, if we consider the best money grind method at the time, which was the Pacific Standard Heist, grinding this out perfectly with the full team could at most make you about 500k an hour with a 40-20 split across the crew and no money being lost during the heist. But let's be honest guys, back in 2015 you were probably lucky enough to finish the heist with at least half the money you made. Those cops just loved aiming for your duffel bags full of money. So considering the most optimal grind method of 500k an hour, you would need to spend 20 hours of running the pack standard heist without losing any money and taking a 40% split each time if you wanted to afford that gold plated Luxor. Now, I'm not saying this is a fair reason to abuse money glitches, but not every player can pour hours into GTA Online and I can see why most players choose to glitch in some way. If you want to truly enjoy G uh, everything GTA Online has to offer, unless you're willing to spend real money on shark cards, you have no choice but to grind non-stop to buy the businesses and the cars. Now, getting into the most damaging glitch in GTA Online, in my opinion, has to be the Orbital Cannon money glitch. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, the Orbital Cannon was a new weapon that was released as part of the Doomsday Heist update and is a add-on for the facility at the cost of 900,000 GTA dollars. Now, what the Orbital Cannon is, is basically a tool for kids that use Mark II oppressors to grief players when they aren't good enough to kill them in a 1v1. The Orbital Cannon is basically a laser shot from a satellite in space that can be used for 500,000 a shot to kill anybody in GTA Online or 750,000 if you're extra shit and you can't even aim the damn thing properly. When the Orbital Cannon had released, 
there was a money glitch where you basically purchased the shot, waited for it to shoot, and disconnected your internet. When you loaded back into GTA Online, you'd basically get your money refunded without it actually being charged, allowing you to make basically 750000 every two minutes. Yes, that's right guys, you could make around 20 to 30 million an hour at this depending on how good you were at the glitch. Now, considering how damaging this was to Rockstar, uh, Rockstar Games patched this almost in less than a day after it was found, but that didn't reverse the damage already done. Back then, if you didn't move the money into your bank account, Rockstar couldn't detect the glitched money as it would only be identified by their anti-cheat software if you made a large transaction from your wallet to your bank account. So all you had to do was hold your glitched hundreds of millions on your character and you'd be able to get away scot-free. Now, comparing this to the recent casino chip glitch, in my opinion, was 10 times worse as the money, uh, as the amount of money made was ridiculous, but back then the worst to happen to those caught was a money wipe, with some people really being unlucky and getting banned, but that wasn't that common back then. To end things off guys, GTA Online truly is a masterpiece of a multiplayer game, but a game on this scale is bound to have bugs and glitches regardless of how much Rockstar invests in QA and bug fixing before DLCs are dropped because at the end of the day guys, the people that are really doing the QA work here are the players themselves as there are some people in the community dedicated to finding and abusing these money glitches as soon as possible with some glitches probably still existing today that are being kept secret to avoid them from being patched. When GTA 6 is announced, I'm, sure, I'm interested to see what Rockstar's approach will be to online will be, with that game, but one thing I'm sure of is that there will be an abundance of glitches to come in GTA 6's online mode. If you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely leave a like as it helps out the channel and subscribe if you enjoyed these type of GTA 5 videos. And as always guys, it's been Nick Plays Games, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.